Hello and welcome everybody to a new video. My name is Michael from the YouTube channel 3D Escape and today I would like to present you a new feature from the Gooseberry production and here you see one image I've created with it. And the feature allows you to drive the density of a volume shader via particles or the vertices of a separated mesh. To get um, the feature you go to builder.blender.org then go to download latest builds and there you select one of the Gooseberry branches, so your operating system. In there you get the feature and now I will show you all the settings uh, you get with it. So here we have a default scene. Now go to the particle system settings and click new. Let's say 2000 particles and just let them fall down. And we can delete the camera. We don't need it now. Well, let's maximize the view so you see a bit more. So. And yeah, now we have a particle system. Uh, we also need a strong light in the scene. In this case, I have a sun lamp with a quite high strength. We've set to five. And we also need one more object. And this one uh, is somewhat like a bounding box around the particles. So let's scale it up. And just for the sake of simplicity, I will just tell you that it is a bounding box and that it needs to include all the particles. But you will see um, during the tutorial that it isn't that true that it needs to cover everything. But just for now, let's make it big enough so all particles actually fit inside. Now let's apply the scale and the location and we are ready to go to apply our new shader. So open up the UV, uh, I'm sorry, the node editor with shift F3. And now let's add in a new material. Uh, let's see, oh, we haven't created one. So now it works and delete the diffuse node and add in a shader volume scatter. I can't recommend to use the volume absorption at the beginning because uh, there you don't see um, all the stuff that good like when you use the volume scatter shader. And also let me just make the node editor a bit bigger. So. Now having those two components in there, so the volume scatter and the material output and make sure you connect it to volume. Let's preview it so you see a cube with a volume shader. Well, that's just normal default boring stuff. But now let's add in texture point density. And if you use the uh, whole node um, Note editor a bit, you will quite quickly see that this node is new. And that's basically the feature I told you at the beginning about. And now I will explain all the settings you have available in there. But to actually um, use the feature, connect the density to the density of the volume shader, select the object where the particle system uh, is applied to. In this case, it's the cube and then select the particle system. Now let's preview the whole thing by pressing shift C in the viewport and you see nothing works. The cube disappeared. We only have the emitter of the particles. The reason is why it doesn't work here is that I am rendering on GPU right now. So let's press shift F7, go to render settings and set it to CPU. Uh, it's quite common for new um, for new cycles feature that they only uh, run on CPU because the GPU um, the GPU uh, method for that just needs to be coded, and for the beginning it's easier to run the whole thing on CPU. So because this feature is I think born yesterday or something like that, so it's pretty pretty new. Uh, it only runs on CPU. So now we have that, but you see 
this is somewhat um, like just a bit of mist so there's not much density going on and to change that we said convert to math node and set it to multiply and let's multiply it by 20 and now we get this really thick smoke or thick volume material and you already see that around each particle that gets a sphere generated and let's have a look and you see around each of the particles there is a volume sphere generated but now let's move the whole thing to the side and you will see all the party or the, the shader actually moves with it but now let's get to the space setting because you will see that there's a quite big change going now ongoing now so let's change it to world and you see everything is gone the reason is that world space uses the world space of the particles so let's say the cube is there and we use world space you will see that all particles that are inside of this cube will get rendered because in world space they are inside of the object and this um, this specifies that they are get that they are getting rendered so so world space uses the particles as they are and then generated with those parameters and object space uses the space of the object so if we scale it down for example and the scale axis and rotate it you'll see those particles got scaled down pinched in the set axis or yeah pinched down in the set axis and then they got rotated but if we would choose the world space we would see nothing but if we would move it across the particles we would see only in there we see the particles so let's say alt s alt g or alt r to reset the transformations and set it to object space and move it to the side again and now let's cover the radius radius does exactly what it sounds like it just specifies the radius um, of the volume spheres that are generated around the particles I will just skip this interpolation thing because it doesn't change that much and it's just how cycles um, interpolates um, the volume stuff and this shouldn't do or this shouldn't affect your renders that much so you will see a slight uh, change but it's not a super important thing so now let's change the radius back to 0.3 and just move somewhere in there to see one of those spheres in a close-up yeah that works quite fine use the box or the border rendering to specify on this area and now you see the spheres are well somewhat low resolution and you see the res resolution is set to 100 but if we crank it up to 500 let's say we will see that it gets more and more like sphere like forms the reason is that the voxel grid this is like um, the pixels on your screen so the pixels on your screen are a 2D raster and a voxel grid is a 3D raster in 3D space. And by setting up the voxel, voxel resolution to 500 it's like using a 4K, 4K image instead of a 1080p image. So this is like the resolution of your image and uh, voxel versus pixel is just pixel is 2D, voxel is something 3D. And you see the resolution just updated to a way better um, density. So now those were all the settings for the particle system. Now let's quickly cover the object vertices. And therefore I will just scale it back to somewhat of a cube and apply the scale. And set the origin back to geometry. And now let's add in uh, Susan, monkey Susan, and let's specify it in there. Make sure you set it to object vertices and then select the object. And now let's render it. 
and let it update. Oh, we set the point density still to 500. So it will take quite a while because higher resolution means slower rendering and I hope it doesn't crash. So we will, or I am back in just a second when Blender calculated that. And it didn't crash, so I set the resolution to 100 and now let's say shift Z and you see our little Susan rendered as a volume object and let's see um, let's just scale the whole thing down and apply the scale and now you see our little Susan and if we scale it up now she's way bigger and you see the the resolution of the of our Susan is quite low you see those individual spheres well, you could try to set down the radius of the spheres to 0 0.1, but you see now we have all those gaps in between. But if we have a closer look at our Susan, you see she is quite low poly. But by adding in a subsurf modifier, you also give Susan more vertices, and more vertices mean more points where cycles generate those volume spheres. And now you see. The Sam has a way higher resolution and we don't have any gaps. Yeah, and this was basically it for this tutorial. So let's quickly change it to uh, a volume absorption shader and give it a color. And now we got our little Susan with a color. Oh, let's set back the density. And this actually finishes off this video for the day. And yeah, I hope you found this explanation of this new feature useful. And I thank, uh, the, or I want to say thank you this, to this developer who made it possible. Yeah, if you like this video, um, I would really appreciate if you would uh, give it a thumb up or if you would um, share it on any social network and if you want to support the channel um, subscribe down the down below to see more of some feature videos and tutorial series related to blender and yeah that's what it, that was it for this uh, tutorial today and I hope I will see you in my next video and yeah in the meantime have a nice time and yeah see you in my next video bye